Uh, greetings, Architecture One students. We are about to draw the peer system for our Peer and Beam Foundation. We drew the uh, um, the stem wall, foundation wall section right over here, and we just kind of continue on with the peer section. Okay. Now um, there are some changes I made to that, and I'll come I'll come back to that and show you what I did. All right. But anyway, coming over here, the first thing I did is I created a section view or a section symbol to indicate that there is going to be a section drawing for that particular piece. And I just copied this symbol down here, brought it over here, and then I exploded it using this tool right here. And then I was able to change the letters to B. Okay. Going back to our drawing, one of the changes that I made is as I started designing the pier, of course, I just designed the pier in isolation, mm -hmm. just going off of a pier system that I know from memory. And uh, when I put it over here, I realized that I needed to dig out underneath the house a little bit more. Of course, the minimum is 18 inches, and that's the way I had you originally draw that. So you're probably looking at yours and saying that something's not the same. Uh, but what you need to do is just go ahead and drop this hatched area down, just, you know, delete the hatch and then redraw this section of the lines so that you have two foot, four and 13 sixteenths inches from underneath the house, from the very bottom of the floor system to the top of the earth. Okay. And then that way this pier system will work. So uh, now with the pier system, um, you know, like I said, I drew it in isolation and you can feel free to draw this based off of this drawing over here. And I'll, I'll kind of do that as I go along uh, to show you how that works. Um, but anyway, after lining everything up, I made that change and uh, we'll go over the different parts here. We got our floor system up top. This is your subfloor, plywood subfloor system. These are your two by tens, um, your floor joists. These, this is a beam. This is a six by 10 beam made up of three over here, three each two by six dimensional lumber glued and pressed. Okay. So that's what makes up that beam. The post itself is a pressure treated uh, Douglas fir. That's what this stands for. Douglas fir pressure treated. It is six by six and it's not really six by six inches because that is just a nominal name, just like regular lumber. And um, the actual size of it is five and a half by five and a half. Um, but anyway, that is the post that coming over here to this side is a 24 by 24 isolated footing steel reinforced. Now, typically we also draw the rebar inside of it, but I haven't really gone over with you, um, you know, draw our, you know, what about rebar and about the steel reinforcement. So we're just going to kind of leave that step out at this point and just annotate that steel reinforced right here. Uh, next we have the six by six post base. And again, that is a nominal uh, dimension, not a real dimension. And it's a uh, post base that is made to fit on a six by six um, square uh, timber. Uh, here are 12 inch post brackets. They're just straight brackets that uh, go between. They fit over the post itself and then go up to the beam and, the, and it kind of bolts together. And then there's two steel 12 inch shims. And I really shouldn't have that slash mark in there. 12 inch shims. Okay, and that's what these two are right here. And that's just to make up the space uh, between the um, beam and the size of the five or the six by six post. So there's a little bit of space there. We just had to make that up and then uh, create the bolts that go through all that and hold everything together. Then, of course, I hatched my concrete and hatched my earth and then hatched my plywood. And this is basically all that you have to do for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started and let's move this out of the way. Okay, so I know the bottom of my footing is going to be even with the bottom of this footing. So I'm just going to stretch over here. Now my footing size is going to be 24 inches by 24 inches. So I just draw a 24 inch line. Okay, now the footing depth is actually going to be 12 inches. So I'm going to offset that by 12 inches. And then I'm going to close the ends just like that. OK, 
Okay, so there is our footing. Now, uh, the footing with these types of footings that are under the house, the isolated footing for the pier, there has to be a two inches of exposed concrete because what I'm putting on top of this, like down here, is I'm putting wood. This is a piece of wood, so there has to be that two inch gap between any wood material and earth material. So there's, there's got to be that two inch gap there. So that's what creates that space uh, for the, uh, the grade level under the house to come about right here is that two inch gap that I need. All right, now the next thing I did is I drew the actual pier and I did that by finding the center and I drew up uh, a, a particular measurement, which was to two foot one and a half inches is what it says right there. So you're drawing that at two foot one and a half inches and then you're offsetting it both ways. Okay, it's a, like I said, it's five and a half inches wide. So if we're offsetting it both ways to make that five and a half inches, we want to cut five and a half inches in half and call that two and three quarters of an inch. So 2.75 would make uh, the decimal equivalent to that. Put the uh, unit of measure inch and then enter. Okay, and then offset in both directions. We can get rid of the center line now and we can cap the top of that off with just another line. Okay, so far so good. All right, next thing I did is I drew the beam itself. So how did I draw the beam? Um, I used a center line again, and I drew up. Now these beams are two by tens. So they're not really two inches by 10 inches. They're one and a half by nine and a quarter. So I drew up nine, 0.25, which is the decimal equivalent of a quarter of an inch. And then I offset that. Again, they're inch and a half wide. So one half of inch and a half is actually three quarters of an inch. So I could say three quarters or just say 0.75. Offset that in both directions. Delete the center line. Use a line to cap the top off and then draw an X to indicate cut lumber, like so. Now what I did with this is I just copied it, I selected it, hit the copy tool right up here in the modify bar, chose a corner to use as a base point, and then moved, moved it over, and moved the other copy. The other copy you have to kind of line up by sight. Okay, so that creates the beam. All right, next thing I have is the uh, floor joist for the floor system. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm a little bit off here. I'm not sure why. Maybe I drew, I think I drew, yeah, I drew this too long. So let's make some adjustments there. I'm gonna grab the top. Let's go ahead and grab these. And just move them out of the way. And let's find out how far did I actually draw that. So I actually drew that. So find the bottom, very bottom of the beam, go up to the top of the beam. That is one foot, four inches. Okay, one foot, four inches. So let's offset this line. One foot, four inches. I think it didn't like the dash I put in it or something. Then we'll go over here to our trim tool. Let's trim that, trim that, trim that. And take this, move it, and put it back where it's supposed to be. Make sure we get close enough so we can line it up just right. Here we go. All right, now we're looking a little bit better. Now we're gonna draw the floor system and it just starts with one piece going this way and we're just arbitrarily drawing the length right now. We'll fix the length later. And then we're gonna offset that by nine and a half inches because that is a two by 10 or not nine and a half, I'm sorry. I said that incorrectly, nine and one quarter inches. So 9.25 inches offset. Okay. And then we're gonna offset again, three quarters of an inch to make the subfloor. And we got that. So we got all the major pieces are all done. Now it's time to go in and put in these brackets. Okay, so what I did on the brackets, 
and I knew how long they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be six inches. So what I did is I, I started here with my cursor. I didn't click anything to draw lines. There's no line being drawn. Okay. And I pulled down and as I pulled down, I typed in six inches and then that starts my line at six inches down below that starting point. Then I type in a length for this bottom portion. I type in a length of one eighth of an inch. Okay. And then I make it go up and I make it go up 12 inches. Okay. And then all I have to do is I can actually come here and just stretch this line. Okay, and then cap that off with another line. Okay, so there is one bracket. And all we're going to do to that bracket is we're going to flip it over to the other side. Click here. Go to mirror. Find the center. Mirror. Oops. No. Okay, get real close to make sure that lined up, and it did. Okay, so we've got that one. Now we're going to put those shims in here. Now what I did with the shims is I drew them just a little bit longer, um, and all I all I did I went and offset this line because there is I forget how much now it, it was half an inch. There's a half an inch space right in here, so I need to fill that one half of an inch. So I offset uh, 0.5 inch, offset this line. Nope, I'm sorry, because I'm putting two pieces of steel in there. I need to offset that one quarter of an inch. So 0.25 inches. Okay, and then open the trim tool, trim this bottom piece right down here. Then take this and arbitrarily just stretch it a little bit longer, just so you can tell that it's two different pieces in there. And then we'll cap it off. Line it up with that piece of geometry. And then we can extend this line up to here. Okay. Now all we got to do is copy or mirror. So I selected those lines, click on the mirror tool, find the center, draw up, no, do not erase. And there I've got my new piece. And let me fix this. So I got two lines stacked on top of each other there, and I don't like to have that. So I deleted that extra line. Now I'm just going to draw this there. Okay, so now we've got the brackets. Uh, there's one other bracket that goes on here. That's the bottom bracket right here. Okay, and that's also the metal itself is one eighth of an inch thick. There's a piece down here that goes up about a half of an inch, quarter of an inch or so, right in there. Okay, so... I'm going to offset this line one quarter of an inch, offset 0.25 inch, okay, and then I'm going to bring it back, or I'm going to trim it, let's go ahead and just trim it here and here, and then I'm going to extend it an additional quarter of an inch on each side, and I figure it's just easier to do it that way. Okay, so when I do that, when you extend these lines, I hope that was clear to you before, but I'm just clicking on the line to highlight it or to activate it, and then I'm clicking on the grip, pulling the grip in the direction I want to go, and then typing in a distance that I want to extend it, and it extends. Okay, and I'm going to draw, uh, cap it off here at the ends. And then do some trimming, trim that out, trim this out, and trim that out again. Here we go. All right, and then I'm going to, I'm just going to draw these lines. Okay, and I'm going to come out one-eighth of an inch. That's the thickness of the metal. I'm going to draw up six inches for the height and then just draw it on over to the side of the beam. Now I'm just going to copy it to the other side. 
Okay, and I'm gonna use the mirror tool. There we go. Now I could have actually went ahead and drawn my bolts first and then copied bolts and everything over, but we'll do the bolts as we go. All right, I'm gonna break it right here. So um, give, you, give you a little break or whatever, and then we'll do a part two video and you can pick up on that one.